the greatest warriors of the Clips lay dead. They formed a bloody trail through the Leviathan. Only Rull had lived to see the throne room. Kalsk calmly sipped his wine and considered Rull from the height of his golden seat. Are you hungry? Rull stared dumbfounded, bleeding and exhausted. He didn't know what to make of a creature that could casually offer sustenance and slaughter in equal measure. I offer you a warrior's paradise, Rull of the Clips. Join me and be counted among the lucky few that might see the end of this world. What could Rull do but accept? Welcome back, Guardians. Today we are starting this series about the Shadows of Kallus. The Shadows of Kallus are different species that Kallus recruited into his empire in order to enact his revenge on the Cabal who betrayed him, which includes Dominus Gol. The normal Leviathan raid armor for the Titan tells the story of Rull, Gun of Kaga Clips. The artwork for this video was made possible with your support on Patreon, and I know Brandon spent over a week on the opening image, so I hope you enjoy it. It is available for download over on Patreon. As usual, I'll be streaming on Twitch when this video goes live. This is Mylan Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Firstly, before telling the story of Rull, I want to make it clear that we do not know what Rull or his species, the Clips, look like. All we have are the written descriptions in the Titan raid armor to interpret his appearance. So as we work our way through the lore, I will let you know which pieces of lore we use to create this character. The really neat thing about this lore is if you have the full Titan raid armor set, the order of Rull's story goes from head to toe, i.e. the Mask of Rull is the first entry, and the Shadow's Mark is the last entry. This is a really welcomed addition to in-game lore, as players can collect the raid armor set and discover the story of Rull. Well, you can try and collect the full set. So starting with the Helmet Armor, Mask of Rull. The Mask of Rull reveals that the Clips homeworld has been poisoned by an event known as a Cataclysm. This event involved interstellar gamma radiation, which poisoned the atmosphere and also destroyed the technology of the Clips. Consequently, surviving Clips resorted to living in caves. The radiation that destroyed their planet also appeared to act as a beacon for an invasion by an alien force. It seems at this event the Cataclysm was caused by the invading alien force to weaken the Eclipse's defences. However, at this point in time, I'm not sure if this alien force was Kallus' empire, or if Kallus came after this alien force had already attacked the Eclipse. I think you could interpret it both ways. Have a listen. As the surviving clips clawed back to subsistence cave farming, they met a new horror. The radiation had burnt a mysterious signal into the comets and asteroids of their system, and as this debris rained down on their world, it seeded hideous alien life. Millennia later, they had become a civilization that knew only war, a culture that revered the gun, batteries of planetary defense weapons holding back an endless poison skyfall. The moon Kug Eclipse bristled with interceptors, ready to fend off any threat. They were no match for the Leviathan. I get the impression that some alien life invaded Rull's homeworld, which started with this interstellar gamma radiation, which not only poisoned their atmosphere, but stripped the Eclipse of their technology. The war lasted a millennia, and then Kallus invaded the weakened planet. The flavor text of the Mask of Rull also suggests that Kallus came after. It reads, My planet was dead. The sky poisoned by war with an extrasolar enemy in a war that continued to rage. Then Kallus came. Rull, Gun of Kug Eclipse. 
In addition, the Gauntlets of Rahul and the Shadows Mark talked about how Kallus wanted to end the war and heal the air of the Clips planet, which suits the theme that Kallus goes to these different species and offers them different rewards and bribes in order for joining his army. The Gauntlets of Rahul reads, Kallus had won, but he took nothing from us. Instead, he gave us everything we needed to end our perpetual war. Rahul, gun of Kaka Clips. The Shadow's Mark reads, Kallus could not heal our air. My planet is still dying, but as long as I serve, I have hope. Rahul, gun of Kaka Clips. So whilst I do think the Clips were invaded by a different species, and then Callus came with the Leviathan promising to heal their planet. I also think you could argue that the initial attack was just Callus' forces, essentially clearing a path for their emperor, and then eventually Callus showed up a millennia later. This could make sense because Callus cripples the planet only then to offer to fix it if the Clips joins his empire. On a side note, many of the aspects for Rahul's character creation came from this item. We made a very general assumption that Rahul's guardian armor may represent what he actually looks like, specifically the mask of Rahul. So we took this idea of Rahul having a snout and these flared head wings as a starting point. Secondly, this idea that the clips were stripped of their technology and also forced into cave dwelling due to the poisoned atmosphere, created images of underground creatures with claws and reliance on other senses, not just vision. So the snout suited this theme, as did the extra receptors that Brandon added to the side of the face. Let's now move on to the Gauntlets of Rull. This lore item continues with the arrival of Callus's Leviathan. As you heard in the Mask of Rull, the Clips has a moon called Kug Eclipse, which seem to station their planetary defences. Rull's full title is Rull, Gun of Kug Eclipse. So I assume Rull was stationed on the moon of Clips when Callus showed up in his Leviathan, and Rull entered the Leviathan to fend off Callus. With that knowledge, have a listen to the item. The greatest warriors of the Clips lay dead. They formed a bloody trail through the Leviathan, only Rahl had lived to see the throne room. Callus calmly sipped his wine and considered Rahl from the height of his golden seat. Are you hungry? Rahl stared dumbfounded, bleeding and exhausted. He didn't know what to make of a creature that would casually offer sustenance and slaughter in equal measure. I offer you a warrior's paradise, Rahl of the Clips. Join me and be counted among the lucky few that might see the end of this world. What could Rahl do but accept? So out of all of the warriors that boarded the Leviathan, only Rahl made it to the throne room. In the throne room, Callus offers Rahl to join his empire and be among the lucky few to witness the Clips' homeworld be destroyed. There are a couple of really interesting points to this scene. Firstly, you will have noticed that Rahl never challenges Callus like we did. He never defeated Callus in the throne room, revealing the robot Callus. I don't know if this will have any significance later in the lore, but it is important to note that Guardians are quite unique with destroying robot Callus aboard the Leviathan. It is not until we destroy robot Callus that we are actually offered a true meeting with Callus. The other interesting part of this card is that Rull wants a warrior's paradise, which is very Viking-esque, but also makes sense considering the Clips endured a millennia of war, a civilization that only knew war, so it makes sense that their culture revolves around a warrior's paradise and honor in dying on the battlefield. Moving along to the chassis of Rull. This continues on from the Gauntlets, and appears that Rahl has agreed to join Callus' empire and is sent on an assassination mission to the Cabal homeworld. Rahl infiltrates the Cabal homeworld during a celebration, allowing him to blend with other merchants on the planet. Have a listen. Rahl gathered his cloak around him tightly as he pushed his way through the teeming marketplace. All around him, Cabal stumbled and pushed their way towards the celebration. 
No one seemed to question his identity as a foreign merchant, but his heart still raced. Rolf thought about the mission that Emperor Kallus had given him. I'm sending you to the Cabal homeworld, Rolf. There's a celebration, and you are to be a bearer of my gifts, the finest wines and spirits the universe has to offer. Rolf was disappointed. He wanted to bring down great beasts, not assassinate old Cabal aristocrats. Oh Rull, don't fret. I promised you a warrior's paradise and you shall have it. The gifts will buy you access to some of my former friends. I haven't spoken to them in some time. And well, I'd like them to know I haven't forgotten. The most interesting aspect about this lore item is that the Cabal homeworld has many different species that are allowed to access the world for trading. This is something we have never known before, however it appears that the Cabal trade with other species and have a marketplace filled with foreign merchants. Moving on to the Greaves of Rull. The Greaves continue with the assassination story on the Cabal homeworld as Rull locates his target. Rull even interacts with Cabal guards, which once again demonstrates the Cabal are used to interacting with different species. The item reads, he arrived at the estate of Iskal, former friend and confidant of the exiled Emperor Kallus. It took surprisingly little to convince the guards to grant him entrance. The Cabal must truly be crazy for the wine he offered up as a gift. It was a day of celebration, after all. Who knows how deep into their cups these guards were. Once inside, he spotted his mark. Rull wasted no time. He removed the sheath from the end of his staff to reveal a spear tip. Iskal fell backwards and attempted to crawl away as his guards were skewered. Rull grabbed a cask of wine and pounced on the terrified old creature, pouring the wine down his throat. Iskal choked and sputtered and flailed helplessly. Rull delivered his message as promised. Emperor Callus has not forgotten you. Rull didn't stop pouring until he felt his cull go limp. Rull was covered in the sticky black and violet of cabal blood and wine. He dropped his cull's body to the floor with a soft thud. Just then, Molly, the celebrant, entered the courtyard. When Rull realized that his second target had carelessly walked alone into a secluded space in the midst of a massive celebration on the cabal homeworld, he thought, Perhaps this is the warrior's paradise the Emperor Callus promised. The implication of this law item is that this old cabal aristocrat, Iskal, was somehow involved with Callus's exile. We don't know the extent to which Iskal helped Dominus Gol seize power, however Callus has not forgotten about the betrayal and consequently sent Rull to assassinate Iskal in a prolonged and horrific method. Let's now move on to the final item, Shadow's Mark. This continues on from Rull just assassinating Iskal and his next assassination target stumbling into the same room by accident. This Cabal is called Molly the Celebrant and the Shadow's Mark reveals that the celebration on the Cabal homeworld is related to Gaul. They could be celebrating the day that Gaul exiled Callus, however it is not confirmed. Have a listen. Rull activated his staff's secondary configuration and fired a harpoon into Molly's exposed flank. The barbs pierced deep and the giant beast of a cabal let out a monstrous howl. Blind with pain, he began to run, dragging Rull behind like a harpooned whale dragging a ship. The honoured celebrant Molly ran through the streets of the cabal homeworld on celebration day, howling in agony and dragging Rull behind. It was such a spectacle that no one was sure what exactly was happening or what to do about it. Molly ran all the way to Dominus Gold's ceremony and right up the steps before collapsing at his lord's feet. Rull realised that now he faced a choice. Try to escape or finish the job. Rull yanked out the harpoon before shoving it through Molly's neck. He had just enough time to pull off his helmet and smile in Gold's face before he was killed. Truly, Emperor Callus had delivered a warrior's paradise. Wow, Rull assassinates both of his targets before smiling as Gaul kills him. 
for me, this scene really helped establish and visualize how big Rel is. Because in the scene, Rel is dragged through the streets by this cabal. So we have assumed that Rel must be smaller than a cabal, hence why he is drawn with a lighter frame. This also suits his assassination style with pouncing on guards and the use of a spear. This item also described how Rel's staff had a secondary mechanism. Essentially, it was concealing a harpoon that could be fired. Lastly, the name of the item, Shadow's Mark, suggests that Rel became a shadow of Kallus when he joined the Empire, which from his lore seems to suggest that the shadows of Kallus track down the enemies of Kallus and assassinate them. That concludes the story of Rel, gun of Kaga Clips, who became a shadow of Kallus. If you'd like to support the channel, leave the word Rel in the comments and a like would be greatly appreciated. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.